and we decided that that wasn't actually a very good practice. The Honourable Mr. Speaker. Brown. Uh, Mr Speaker, I wish to make a ministerial statement under Standing Order 356 in relation to the extension of a national transition period under the Civil Defence Emergency Management Act 2016. Mr Speaker, the Honourable um, Jerry Browning. The, uh, the Act uh, passed last year by this House um, enables uh, a state of emergency to end, but a state of transition uh, before you get full recovery to begin. It requires a declaration, and it requires that declaration to be uh, pointed to, uh, uh, notified to the House. So, pursuant to Part 5 of the Civil Defence Emergency Management Act 2016, I formally give the House notice that I have today approved an extension to the national transition period in Kaikoura and Haranui districts in the Waiā Awatiri ward of Marlborough district. The extension came into force at 1 p.m. today and will last for a further 90 days. The extended national transition period for these areas will now end at 1 p.m. on the 7th of June 2017, unless extended or terminated earlier. An extension of the national transition period will help recovery managers deal with the ongoing recovery issues, such as restricted access to some places uh, in the district uh, and to buildings, while further technical and engineering investigations are carried out. The national transition period allows that the national recovery manager uh, to coordinate the work of central government agencies while also allowing local authorities to continue effective recovery work on the ground. Mr Speaker, there is a very uh, constructive uh, uh, engagement between local authorities and the recovery manager uh, progressing at the present time. This simply enables it to go on for a period longer uh, in order to make things better for people in that district. Claire Curran. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, the Labour Party supports the extension uh, to the national transition period, and uh, we uh, we support any measures that will um, will ha hasten and improve the recovery process for the people of Kaikoura uh, and the recovery of their e economy. And our thoughts remain with the people who live and work in those areas and those who are working on the ground to assist in their recovery. Um, Mr Speaker, I note that uh, in this very house, just around about a week before the Kaikoura earthquake, Parliament passed a piece of legislation which provided a framework for recovery management. Um, providing a mandate for recovery managers, strengthening the requirements for plans for recovery and supporting a seamless transition from response into that recovery phase and establishing a transitional notice mechanism that make emergency powers available for a specified period of time. So I think we can see that the legislation is, is being um, effective. Um, However, around that time, Mr Speaker, of the Kaikoura earthquake, there were some significant concerns um, in the public arena about how the public was informed, um, particularly around the, the threat of, of, of a national tsunami and the lack of a, um, an effective alerting service. Um, post that, the, the, that process, there was a review promised of that, and that still has not occurred. And I do want to just put on record that, that it is very important that that review occur. And then three weeks ago, we had the Christchurch fires, um, uh, which again, uh, as which uh, we're talking about um, now, um, uh, also had a um, questions raised about the communications, the chains of command and the communication channels. Um, so these things are important. They require a bipartisan approach. Um, we are expressing our support for um, the Minister's statement today. We, uh, we note that there are issues that do need to be addressed in terms of how we approach uh, the, um, the immediate aftermath of these major events and how the communication channels work. And we, 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 um, we are keen to work with the government on that. Stephen Browning. <coughs> the Greens will um, support this extension as well for the, for the genuine purposes of recovery that are purported here. We are concerned, however, that 
we got this at such short, short notice and we've had no real time to look at the implications or even talk with our constituencies about what this might mean for them. So our support uh, is a slightly nervous one. It's the region that I live in, covers, uh, is covered by this, and I have businesses coming to me consistently, consistently and individuals, homeowners and communities, whether it be Waiau or Seddon in particular, that feel that they are being cast aside by this government and the recovery. The processes that we hear from the Minister saying there's good dialogue with those, the teams that are working there, but is there good dialogue with communities? There is not. And there isn't with the local Member of Parliament either. He might be seeing some that it suits, but he's not doing the rest. The business support package that was extended out, why not roll that out another 90 days as well? When that was announced that it would be extended, effectively from my reading, all that was being extended was the using up of the change from the money announced in the previous extension. There was no serious new money apart from that one million for a mural fund. That is not going to help those communities and businesses through this coming winter, this very dark winter that's coming there until that road is opened. And I put it to the Minister and other Ministers that they should be setting up a suspensory loan facility for those businesses so they can stay there. There are businesses going under today while we are here now. There are communities wondering if they've got any future now. And this may help on some of it, but there's a slow stuff around the road and the minister knows full well about the mucking around with the um, land uh, transport authority and other things that have been going on. There, this is another example of a very untidy and messy, badly managed approach to the recovery. We'll support it, but we'd like to see some very more, much more positive stuff for the businesses in that area and let's hope you will facilitate something very, very soon that gives the communities real confidence that there is um, a far more recoverable future, but more than just the road recovery. So um, that's where we come from. We'll support it. We have some nervousness about some of the implications. We're upset about the lack of time to consult around it. Um, hoping for much, much more from the government, um, but support from the Greens. Thank you. Richard Prosser. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, New Zealand First thanks the Minister uh, for this notice, albeit that it's um, a little bit late, coming uh, some five hours after the uh, uh, notice actually comes into force. Um, do share some of Mr Browning's concerns, but I would say um, in response to that that they're, they're probably not germane um, to the issuance of this particular order. I think. Um, that they are something that are, that are separate, and perhaps the way in which um, the earthquake recovery is dealt with on the ground is, is a matter for another discussion. Um, the extension of this order itself, uh, Mr Speaker, I think we are fortunate in New Zealand that um, the imposition of emergency powers and the imposition of executive authority um, over and above uh, normal legal procedures is something that happens on a, on a rare basis, uh, and we trust that that happens for, uh, for very good reason when it does, and we tend to support it for those reasons. Um, and this certainly appears to be uh, a, a case in point. Um, we do know that uh, when natural disasters occur, uh, cleaning up after them, getting things back on track is not something that, um, that can occur always to a formula. There are um, delays that, that crop up, there are additional elements of damage that are found, uh, jobs are found to be taking longer than, than was previously thought, and so uh, in situations like that it, it only makes sense that the emergency um, systems that are put in place in order to facilitate recovery uh, can be extended as necessary. So uh, uh, not to hold up the House um, any further, uh, Mr Speaker, I would say that New Zealand First does thank the, the Minister for this notice. Uh, we do support it. We share some of, of uh, Mr Brownie's concerns, but they are, as I say, probably better dealt with in another forum. Thank you, Speaker.
The Honourable Jerry Brownie in reply. Uh, Mr Speaker, can I uh, thank uh, other parties in the House for their uh, support on this uh, particular extension? Um, can I just uh, apologise for the uh, way in which the information has been disseminated this afternoon? I must say that I have myself been caught somewhat short, but that simply reinforces in my mind the need for uh, some reconsideration of uh, how emergency services are uh, managed in New Zealand, and I'll be in touch with other parties to reconvene the, uh, the cross-party group that we were going to um, uh, be, uh, uh, as we were going to be meeting at the time the Christchurch fires occurred. Um, I take on board the comments from uh, uh, Stefan Browning. I know that uh, uh, he has done a lot of work up in the uh, uh, parts of the country that he spoke, the arbitrary and uh, around the Clarence, etc., right down into Kaikoura. I know that's very much appreciated, and uh, I've appreciated the feedback that he's been able to give us at various times. The uh, comments from Claire Curran, I think, uh, are salient, and uh, it will be up to, I guess, the entire parliament to try and sort out some of this. But I once again uh, thank people for their support and apologise for the very short notice uh, of it coming to the House. We now run. Uh... Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I, oh, point of point order. Point of order, Barbara Kirk. Uh, Mr Speaker, I seek leave for the House to adjourn. Is there any objection to that? Does that motion be put to the vote first? No, it's not a motion, it's a statement. It's, it's a motion, it's, oh, sorry. Okay, so we go back to, back to Barbara Kirk. Is, is there any objection? There are... <laughs> for today? Oh, oh, not until the 23rd of September. Okay, there, there being no objection, um, uh, the debate on the Resource Manager Legislation Amendment Bill is set down for assumption next sitting day and the House stands adjourned until 2pm on Tuesday the 14th of March 2017.